So on the upper side of my shop here, it's always been a swamp. You know, water comes down from this hillside, kind of collects in the bottom here, it has nowhere to go, just kind of butts up against the building, and the ground pretty much always stays, you know, pretty wet here. I went through here, cleaned out all my junk. I have to put in a French drain here. Actually, I'm going to do two. Uh, one of the commenters in uh, a few videos back suggested that I put in two drains here. One kind of at the base of the hillside, and then one over, not up next to the building, but, you know, a few feet off of it to kind of collect the water maybe a little better. My original my original plan was just to put a, one heavy duty drain down through here. But I think two would be even better. So that's kind of the plan. But first I gotta get back here and kind of clean this out. Remove all the rocks and stuff that are out of the way. And I also want to get, I want to have access around the building with my, ex, with my bobcat or excavator. But right now these huge rocks are in the way. At least this one and those two. And some of the dirt here so i gotta get that thing around here see if i can't sink it in this mud and get it horribly stuck or get these rocks out one or the other so my son went to ride his bike the other day and for some reason it blew a head gasket you can see that right there it's just a pretty elaborate o-ring that's all it is it's just a rubber rubber gasket anyway this thing was steaming like crazy out the exhaust pipe it smelled sweet like antifreeze i didn't know if it had frozen or what had happened but you know uh, it didn't for some reason it just got pinched or something in the reassembly this is the bike that a lot of you if you follow the channel watched me do a clutch job on uh, the cylinder and redone the uh piston rings did the power valve on it all that good stuff and it's about time for him some new tires that's for sure wow around here you have to have a soft compound tire these are pretty hard actually this is a, i think an intermediate but they're still hard for all these rocks around here it just tears the knobs off of them but anyway i changed the head gasket and stuff on this this morning hoping that that will fix it i did ride it up on the hill and it seemed okay but it's always something with these bikes good.
But here's a look at the rocks around here. At least the majority of them are very similar to this. Just packed full of old sea life. Coral, shells. I mean, that one's full of shells there. I mean, any rock you pick up almost is like that. Just full of old sea creatures deposited on the bottom of the sea floor and eventually turned into stone. Check out that little lizard. Just a little guy. Watch him take off, probably. They're fast. The fat guy there. I think it's what they call water dog. Yeah, they get. I've they get seen bigger, these yeah. like, I mean, six times, seven Didn't times we this see big. A bigger one than that here. Haven't we seen one bigger than that? I don't know if I've seen a bigger one than this here, but I've definitely seen them. You know, like that big around. Big around is a. I don't know. Probably almost the size where of a put him? apple. I mean, somewhere where it's wet. I mean. Mm -hmm. He's so cute. Here. What if he tries to chunk into my finger? He's not going to bite you. I, mean, I don't even know if he has teeth. It's neat. Look at him trying to hide. <laughs> Take him down there by the creek and put him by, by the water. It's just so wet back here. Plus, this bobcat has no chance of pushing this bucket into the ground with all these tree roots and rocks. It just doesn't happen. Not on this ground, anyway. This is a small excavator job. But it would have to be a really small one because there's no space here. You know, what do you do with that scoop once you get it? You know, I guess you could, you know, if you could get it back here, have it facing out, maybe you could scoop and dump it in the bobcat and drive out. But anyway. Uh, before this project ever even started, you know, I brought my dad back here and I was like, you know, telling him what I was going to do. I'm going to clean this out really good through here. That way I can, you know, get some equipment or trucks or, or whatever back here. Uh, I'll just come in, you know, scoop this out and there you go. You know, no problem. You know, and he looks at me and he's like, you know, <laughs> it's not going to be that easy. And, uh, you know, I never expected it to be easy. But these rocks, they just make it a nightmare to dig. They really do. Every time you swing this thing into the ground, you hit a rock. And that's not an exaggeration. a very opinion rich topic um, and it's what can I do if anything actually to help stop the erosion on the bank below the shop there I've had a lot of people suggest you know, make some gabion baskets and stack them up along that hillside and you know, maybe that would maybe that would help and it, it's very possible that it could but I've seen a lot of professional outfits living along water my whole life actually I think maybe three years of my life 
uh, I couldn't walk out of my front door and throw a rock into a creek of some sort. This is just a water, a water wash. It's not a creek. Water just collects from these hillsides and drains off, and once you know it dries up a bit, this dries up. But when this thing runs heavy, like I showed in my last video, it's scary tough. And if you've never lived around water, it's easy to underestimate just how powerful it is. And about anything you put in here would get washed away. You could set a piece, that bobcat, the piece of equipment down in there, and if it flooded real heavy, it would end up down, down the road. So, you know, I'm sitting here trying to <clears throat> think what I can do that won't make my problems worse, that won't be a big eyesore, you know, that won't push water off onto my neighbor's driveway. I don't want to do that either. So I think what I'm going to do is a, a dual approach. Natural, for one, I'm going to plant some fast-growing trees on that hillside because everywhere there's a tree at, the bank's in pretty decent shape. And for two, <clears throat> I think I want something that will conform to the hillside instead of being square baskets uh, that risk water getting behind them and then making my problems worse. I've seen a lot of professional outfits come in and try to fix erosion issues along the roadways around here. I've seen them drive railroad track down into the bedrock. I mean, you know, who knows how far they drive it down. You know, money no option on this, whatever they do. Clad those railroad tracks with guardrail, hard guardrail, and then the next flood comes in and it just eats whatever they did for breakfast. So. That's a that's a that's a, always a, a chance that anything that I do will just get totally annihilated the first time the water gets up. What I think that I'm going to do: plant some trees, fast-growing trees on that hillside. You know that will help. And then dump some rubble over in just the problem area, the main problem area, to see how it acts and performs. Dump some rubble over there, held in also by this wire that's laid on the outside, not just laid on the outside, but held in, you know, to the bedrock on the outside at the bottom to keep water from washing it away at the bottom. For a lot of people, you know, they're like, man, just make some baskets and put them on that hillside. Unless those baskets are recessed back on that hillside, water has a good chance of getting behind them and making my problems much worse. And if, without having access to equipment down there you're left with a shovel in your hand and i think the majority of people if handed a shovel dealing with all these huge rocks would be like well maybe your idea is probably the best suited for your area so i think that's what i'm gonna do just a minimalist approach trees dump my rubble over held in at the bottom with this wire and see how that acts i think that's really my only realistic option other than you know spending i don't know who knows how much time trying to dig out that hillside which i don't want to disturb it any more than it is and then trying to recess baskets into it or pouring a complete concrete something that has risk of failure as well there's just no easy answer for this i've come to that conclusion and uh, i think probably my best bet is you know, what I've been thinking, and that is dump my rubble over there held in by this. That way it can conform to the hillside if anything changes and uh, is less likely to get water behind it, causing my problems to be even worse. This type of fence is awesome. <clears throat> Not only is it really strong, but if you try to climb it, it will pinch you real good. Or try to mess with it at all, actually.
only times, knock on wood, that I've been hurt in the shop really bad, twice, has been with one of these, an angle grinder. I'm about to cut this fencing to the length that I need, but I figured I'd share a story with you. And that is, I've been to the hospital twice because of one of these, both of those times, or maybe more than twice, actually. And that was from sparks in the eyes, but those aren't the real bad injuries, although they could have been. Uh, you know, you go to the hospital, they put dye and stuff in your eye, they use a magnet to remove the metal chunks that get in there. Sometimes you have to go to a, a eye specialist to get it out, which I have had that to do that as well. All while wearing safety glasses, they can get between the cracks and stuff on your safety glasses. But anyway, to get to the point or the meat of this little story, um, the two times that I've been hurt really bad was one with a cutoff wheel, like I've got here now, exploding after the cut that I was making closed up and pinched the wheel. I was wearing uh, leather TIG welding gloves and it pinched the wheel, jerked the grinder, the wheel exploded kind of, um, and got into my fingers so bad that I was afraid to take the glove off. Stuff was dripping out of the end of the glove because it shredded the glove. And I was afraid if I took that glove off, part of me would remain inside of it. It didn't, obviously, but it could have. And the other time got into me real good as well. Almost, I think it was the same, yeah, same finger. This one finger seems like they always want to go towards that finger. Uh, a, using a flap wheel, got caught in some grating. The spacing in the grating was perfect to kind of catch that flap wheel. Um, <laughs> And man, that got me really good as well. Be careful with one of these. They're more dangerous than you would expect. And they'll eat your lunch if you let them. This wire right here needs to spin out like that. So spin that one, keep going that way? Yeah, yeah there okay. it goes. I got it. It's coming right out. Here it is, this one. Oh, it's oh that's much better than trying to cut the thing. Oh, this out. Look at that. That's a good way to link some together as well. That's the way it's put together, I think, anyway. they form the whole thing actually. I roll this up. Oh yeah. Here we go. Got right impaled by one of my posts. <laughs> I won't be able to get it off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh,
So the peanut the squirrel mugs and stickers are available now. Check the link in the description if you're interested. I haven't seen Peanut all week. I've seen her tracks. I know she's eating her food, but she hasn't stopped by to see me, which is a bit disappointing. And I'll have to have a talk with her. But if you'd like to get you a mug, pick you one up. They're pretty nice, actually. Very well made. So it may be a little hard to see what's going on here. Everything kind of blends together. But hopefully you can see I have eight inch and an eighth concrete anchors drilled down 16 inches into the bedrock and epoxied in. I have my wire fencing laid over top of that at the bottom. And then I'm going to be welding metal strapping along the bottom of these concrete anchors to hold that fencing down at the bottom. Then my rubble will be poured in behind that. I'll be using stainless steel threaded or stainless steel wire rope tied and concreted into the center of the mass to hold the ends in, keep them from washing out. This is something that you know, I thought up. I figured I could easily expand on this or work on it if needed. Um, it'll act as a blanket of rock on the hillside instead of just baskets with square edges and I'm hoping we will conform to this hillside and just if anything slow the erosion down and have a good chance of surviving and if it does fail I don't have a ton of work involved in it so that's what I'm going to try and I think that it has a decent chance of surviving for a while anyway. She looks good. She looks healthy. Hadn't seen her in probably a week or so, so I'm a bit concerned. She's pretty. Yep, pretty squirrel. Chewing the Actually, you want to eat? hungry.
So a friend and viewer of the channel, we'll call him Al, because that's his name, uh, met him at the Barzi Summer Bash last year. We've been in contact ever since then, often on through email. He was, he's from Minnesota. He was coming down near my area for a machine auction and asked if it'd be all right if he stopped by, you know, paid me a visit, maybe lended a hand, lend, lent a hand and, you know, seen the, seen the shop and stuff. And I said, of course. He also mentioned that he had a couple items for me, you know, his gifts, I guess. And about three hours before his arrival, uh, I get an email that says, hopefully you have some forks available like forklift or something like that. Of course, I don't have anything with forks on it. I do have a neighbor that has, you know, a tractor that has forks on it, but that's about it. Anyway, I assumed maybe he had a box of stuff that was somewhat heavy and it would be, or a pallet that could be, you know, taken apart and put off the truck, no problem, you know. Uh, so I wasn't that concerned. Well, he pulls up in what looks to be a full-size semi it's the biggest box truck i believe i've ever seen with a sleeper you know on the back and swings the doors open to the back of the truck and says there you go and, you know starts pointing out things that he wants me to have so i was a bit surprised let me show you what he brought i think you'll be surprised as well um most of which is really awesome. Well, all is awesome. One item I don't know that I'll be able to use or not without you know, looking into it a little deeper, but we'll see. It's all neat stuff, stuff that I think you'll find interesting. So let me start off with the small stuff, and we'll move, we'll move up. So Al brought me down a set of sawhorses, probably the heaviest ones I've ever seen. It's a quarter inch thick, two inch by two inch angle iron for the legs. That is a half inch thick by two inch wide solid steel strap that connects both sets of legs together. And then the two legs on the outside are connected by a three quarter inch solid steel round. And then that is quarter inch thick by two inch square tubing on top. And it's a match set, so that's really nice. I actually considered making a set last week. I'm glad I did not. Those will last as long as your family name lasts, I'm sure. He also brought down a massive chunk of tool steel, actually the biggest piece I've ever seen in person. It is 6 inches thick, 16 inches in diameter. It's a piece of D2 that's flame cut. You can see the entry wound there, and cut around. Um, I've got a, dot, a knife made out of this stuff, and it definitely holds an edge well and seems to be really abrasion resistant. So that was really nice. The guy was actually using that for weight in the back of his pickup truck, Al said, so he'd get better traction. I mean, I guess you could figure out what a piece like that weighs, but it's quite a bit. So <laughs> that was pretty nice. I don't know what I'll do with that, but well, I'll probably find something. Let me show you the other stuff that he brought down. So in Al's truck, he had two hardness testers. This one says Rockwell on the front and Wilson on the side. It's a Model 4 JR. I don't know anything about these. I haven't had a chance to do any research on them, although I understand what they do, but I've never used one. It came with the weights. The only thing that this one's missing that I know of at this moment is the diamond point that indents in the work. So I'll have to try to find one of those, but everything seems to move and, you know, do what it should as far as I know. So we'll see. I'm excited about that, and I think it'll look good once I get the shop together, uh, sitting next to a heat treat oven. So we'll be able to test the harness of the parts that we make. So here's a tool that Al brought that I've wanted, you know, I've wanted to get one ever since I started machining, ever since I got my first little uh, bench top lathe, because they're just so nice for grinding high speed steel tooling per and perfectly uh, capable of doing the majority of grinds that are needed, you know, in a home shop. Now this is a little ball door, tool grinder some people call them a carbide grinder you can grind on either the right or the left-handed side obviously both have tiltable tables have a grinding grit and coolant catch uh, pans under both sides along with a cooling cup nice little uh, work light as well and a really nice table so that's definitely appreciated uh, both clockwise and counterclockwise rotation on the motor uh, so you can grind both right or left side of the wheel so nice for sure 
So here's a name some of you will be familiar with. This is a little machine that I just couldn't say no to simply for the joy of cleaning it up, even if I may not actually need it. I thought it would be a great uh, project and good content for us in the future. This is a 30 taper Adcock Shipley horizontal milling machine. This is the production version, so it has an automatic table that moves back and forth, but you can also move the table by hand, so you can use it either, either way. But actually it's set up for production run. It appears to me that at least in its last lifetime, all this machine has done is set, as far as the table, knee, and saddle, in one position. The spindles run, and then this fixture that somebody's made has moved apart in and out of the threading head that's in the spindle. And that's all this thing's done, at least for a very long time. The handle on the knee, or on the saddle, is broken, and it's missing the one on the knee. But for what it was doing, it didn't, it didn't need to move at all, the table. So that's a bit promising. Maybe this thing's not completely wore out. I haven't seen anything that concerns me at all on it as far as where, just for a quick look over anyway. It is a belt driven spindle. Everything seems extremely smooth on it. So we'll see. All the change gears for the table as far as its movement back and forth or appear to be all here. So that's a good thing as well. All the casting, the casting on this thing is extremely thick, uh, surprisingly thick for the size melon machine this is. So, you know, I don't know anything about these really, but this appears to be a really well-made little machine that I think, you know, will be either good for me or good for somebody, but I know that I'm going to spend some time on it and clean it up and go over it. I'm excited to, to dig into this thing. So, that'll be coming up in the future. I thought that little thing was just too cool to to say no to so it didn't get as much of unloading footage as i would have liked to have got but me and al were so busy this little adcock shipley mill somewhere between the auction place and my place decided it wanted to break through the pallet on the camera side here you'll see it's basically setting one end edge of it is sitting directly on the flat of the truck which made it to where you couldn't get any forks under it. You know, it compromised the pallet. It was, it was tough. This little machine's quite heavy. So we ended up using that Marshalltown uh, pry bar and wedging it up enough to where we could drive some tuba sixes in between the machine and a pallet with the sledgehammer. And it worked out, but we worked pretty hard and, uh, you know, pretty... <laughs> I don't know, MacGyverish to get this thing to where we could get it unloaded without it you know, being a danger to ourselves or itself. That on this side and that on that side, we might be able to make some damage with this thing. Go team, go. Yeah. I see, and that has come in handy for you. Yes, it Most is. Of it is really great. Let's see if I can get it good. Be under that thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lift that, and I'll lift this on this side? And... I don't know. Thank you. Oh, this is going to work good. Mm -hmm. can get something under it. in the uh, thing on the wall, but it's like, you yeah. know, oh, I don't want to do that. Is there a, oh, there's a two before, right? There. Yeah, that's the one that's like sitting in there. You know, if I could drive, maybe drive that up under that. Let me go over here. Maybe you set that down for a second. So Al's about as nice a guy as you're probably going to meet. By the end of the day, we knew each other pretty well, and, uh, you know, anytime you move equipment, it's stressful and and not easy. By the time we shuffled all this stuff around that he had on this truck and got what we needed to get off, uh, we were exhausted. So we just ordered some pizza, sat down, and took a break, and uh, had a good visit. It was nice.
So here's the one tool that Al brought that I'm not for sure that I'll be able to use. We'll see. It's tagged 480 volts, which I wasn't aware of, but you know, I don't have 480 here, and it doesn't show an option for 220 wiring. And one more thing that uh, is kind of a downfall for me on this machine is that it is a high-speed spindle version, so it's only made to run, I believe, the smaller drills, and that the motor is directly coupled with the uh, drill spindle, so it wouldn't be an easy retrofit uh, to just swap the motor. But we'll see. Look how big that work table is on that. I mean, you could easily throw an engine block up on there and drill some holes. It's coolant through. It's definitely an industrial piece of equipment, and uh, it's a shame that it's 480 only, because that would be just be amazing for small drills. It's a sensitive drill, so you could definitely feel what's going on. It very smooth. So we'll see. You don't know anything for sure yet, but that's the one I'm not for sure I'll be able to be able to use, unfortunately. All right, guys, that's it this week. Definitely a lot of manual labor on my part. Digging around the side of that shop took, it took all day, um, but it was well worth it. I've been wanting to get equipment you know, to the back side of here for, ever since I've owned the place actually, but just never had the ability to do it, or the time to do it, so that was nice. Got my bank reinforcement going, got my foundation partially dug, and got some new equipment. Uh, all of which were pretty labor intensive to achieve. But as far as this bank goes, I really think it has a decent, you know, decent chance of success with a minimal amount of work. Well, you know, we'll find out if it succeeds good, and if it fails, I'll go another route. I don't, you know, we'll take the easiest approach first. So, glad to see Peanut. I was a bit worried, like I said, I hadn't seen her in a few days, so it's good to see her. Uh, mugs and stickers are available, maybe shirts coming soon, so if you're interested, check in the link in the description. Huge thanks to Al. Man, that was nice. Who does that? Who buys equipment and delivers it? Al does. So talk to Al if you want some free equipment. So, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, like I always say. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.